this uh, photograph by uh, Michael Najjar is real in the sense that he went into the mountains with his camera. However, it's also virtual as he manipulated the slopes of the mountain to resonate with the slopes of the Dow Jones index. <laughs> this is the NASDAQ. Here we see the Japanese Nikkei index and the Chinese Hangzhou stock exchange. Increasingly, we hear that uh, money and our economy is becoming virtual. Already in 2006, the world's first virtual millionaire was announced. A German lady, Eileen Graf, made a fortune selling real estate in the online community Second Life. More recently, we've seen the notoriously volatile Bitcoin, which went from a value of zero to over a thousand dollar back to $230 today. And now many people wonder, how is it possible that a virtual coin can have the value of $230? Well, the answer is very simple. Virtual money is a pleonasm, like white snow, a redundant expression. Money has always been virtual. Well, perhaps not uh, 10,000 years ago when people were still trading cattle as livestock, a cow for two sheep, some eggs as small change maybe. Uh, also people were trading tools and at a certain moment a rich person would have like a hundred of these tools on his land, which weren't used for digging or working the land anymore, but for trading only. As a result, blacksmiths started to make them smaller and smaller. And this is how the coin currency was born. This is the coin currency 1000 BC. And I can tell you that to, to, to dig a hole with it, it's kind of clumsy, it's not working. But it's not the end of it, because at a certain moment someone said, why not make it round? And the coin was born. And for us, this is Difficult to understand, but at that time, this was an abstraction. You know, this was sort of like the virtual reality of that time. It's not the end of it, of course, because later we got banknotes, uh, because it was kind of clumsy to carry around a whole bag of coins all the time, and you would have a banknote note that would represent a certain value in coins until 1973 when the gold standard was abandoned. Meanwhile, we also had plastic already. These credit cards, they're not made of gold or silver, you know. It's just, I think it's fascinating that we as human beings seem to be the only animal in the world capable of consuming symbols. And some years ago I made an attempt to reconnect money with something that's actually most valuable in life. This became the data fountain. The data fountain connects the real-time currency rates of the yen, the euro, and the dollar to a fountain. So stock traders who normally spend the whole day looking in their screen to see how their money is doing, now have this natural phenomenon and they can look at the fountain and see how the financial world is progressing. We created this embedded system that uh, drags the data from the internet and uh, yeah, every five seconds we got new data to put on the fountain. It's quite fascinating that indeed this changes all the time, every five seconds. You know, it's, it's not what you would expect, but these data changed all the time. Just small changes, but still we projected it on the fountain. This movie was made by Japanese television and um, yeah, I also had the honor to explain on, uh, on Japanese television uh, what the project was, but we don't speak Japanese here, right? So let's move on. If we look at this development of, of finance and, and, and money over time, then you see that there's this tendency towards uh, the intangible. And so it seems we, you, we used to live in a world of things. Now we're living in a world of information in which the virtual slowly but steadily becomes the reality. So it's almost as if we are living in the matrix already. Well, 
Are we? How would you know? To understand what is happening, I think we need to begin at the beginning. It is now some 4.5 billion years ago since our planet came into existence. And at first it was just a lonely rock floating in space. It had a geosphere, but it took three billion years before the biosphere emerged on planet Earth. And then one billion year later, mankind emerged. So we, we've just arrived, really. However, our presence does not go unnoticed because with our human activity and technology, we caused the rising of an entirely new sphere on planet Earth, the technosphere. And just like the biosphere evolved and builds upon the geosphere, the technosphere builds upon and interacts with the biosphere. Evolution goes on. However, in this technosphere, we also see some entirely new ecologies emerging. Nowadays, over 80% of all stock trading is done by computers. So is it time that we start to perceive the financial system as an ecology in its own right? And if we do that, then how would it compare to much older ecologies, like for instance, a rainforest? Well, the financial system has been uh, evolved in the last few decades. Rainforest has been there already for centuries. A rainforest is self-sustainable. It feeds on sunlight. Financial system feeds on the biosphere. And a rainforest is a threatened ecology, whereas our financial system is a threatening ecology. You could also wonder, like, which one is more valuable? So I would like to ask you, like, who in the room here thinks the rainforest is more valuable than the financial system? Okay, that's quite a lot of people. And, 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 and who thinks the, the financial system is more valuable? I see there. <laughs> so do you work at a bank, sir? <laughs> I think these uh, should be uh, linked. We should link these ecologies. And allow me to elaborate on this with a very simple example that we can all understand. Meet Alberto. Alberto is a Brazilian farmer in the Amazon rainforest. And Alberto has a choice. He can burn the forests down and plant some soy there. Then he will earn money to feed his family. Or he can let the trees be. But then he will earn zero. So most of us just agree that this rainforest is quite valuable, but it's not articulated in our financial system. Alberto in earns zero. How to move on? We can continue and pretend all is well. We can do that. But then at a certain moment when the last tree has been cut, the last river has been spoiled, and the last fish has been caught, we will realize that you cannot eat money. <laughs> if we are to cope with current issues like deforestation, decreasing biodiversity, and also climate change, then we need system change. And we can do it. We've created so many currencies in the past. So I'd like you to imagine. Imagine that we had a currency for environmental value. Let's call it the echo coin. The echo coin specifies environmental value, and every person that does well for the environment and the biosphere can earn echo coins with it. So now our friend Alberto might plant a thousand trees and earn a thousand echo. Or um, Alison might earn echoes by collecting beach waste. Jimmy does research on biodiversity in the corral. And Nicholas just earned his first echo by planting a tree. The echo will move along with other currencies. It will, it will fluctuate. Just like the yen, the euro, and the dollar, the echo will fluctuate. 
So since environmental value is quite scarce, it might go sky high. But when we have like a million Albertos out there planting trees all over the planet, its value might plummet. And that's fine, because over end, in the end, things will balance. And this is how we connect economy and ecology. And yes, there are lots of questions. Like who should start this? The World Bank, the UN, could we also do it locally? How to fund it? Well, maybe we could tax some of those computerized algorithms a little bit. And how do we avoid corruption? And what exactly is defined as environmental values? There's a lot to discuss still. However, I'm already sure of, of one thing, which is that Aruba is an enormously wealthy island. And that's, that's great for you folks. And if we zoom out on a world level, then I think the most important thing is that we understand and realize that we humans have created this technosphere. It is our next nature. It's wild and unpredictable as ever, and we have to domesticate it, and we have to link it to the biosphere. Because in the end, there's only one planet, which happens to be our planet.